Here is anterior view of the brain. Longitudinal fissure. This is your lateral fissure and inside in between here you can see part of this continuational fold called the incisura. Pons, medulla oblongata, pituitary gland. This is the anterior. This is posterior. Cerebellum, cerebrum. On areas of the cerebrum, this is the basically the telencephalon. This area right here, thalamus and hypothalamus, this is part of our diencephalon. Mesencephalon is this region right about here. In the anterior, which kind of anterior lateral area, this would be where we have, it's called the cerebral peduncle, see, connecting the cerebrum to the diencephalon region. And it, it's kind of a continuation all the way through. Mesencephalon. This posterior area, this is your corpora quadra gemina. It has basically on both sides would be four nodules, body of four, and they're twins, like superior and inferior. Superior being your superior colliculi. This is your visual reflexing. Inferior, this is your auditory reflexing. Right above this, you have a midline structure. This is part of our, get a little closer. This is part of our endocrine system, pineal gland. It's actually like a little acorn. That's what its actual shape is. And you can see going down from this region here, the third ventricle going down aqueduct of the midbrain to the fourth ventricle. Here's another model showing you the ventricles. This is a cast model of the ventricles. Remember ventricles lined with epidermal cells. Choroid plexus is referenced with on this model as this pink. It is basically epidermal cells with capillary beds produces cerebral spinal fluid. On either side here, it looks like a ram's horn. This left and right area here is referencing our lateral ventricles. The lateral ventricle has your anterior posterior and lateral horn. That's why I think of it as a ram that has horns. And then you can see, let me get a little closer here. You can see that interconnection right here. This is the inter, since this is ventricles, interventricular foramen. It's opening into the third ventricle. See in midline it is very thin. We can see it lateral a lot easier. The lateral aspect you can see down here, this is basically right about where your hypothalamus is, the infundibulum, going down to the pituitary gland. This little opening, it's a little, it's an actual opening. Kind of see it right there. This is where your interthalamic adhesion is, and I'll show you this on the thalamus on a mid-sagittal 
section of the brain. And you can see coursing down, this is the aqueduct of the midbrain. Going into this region right here, known as the fourth ventricle, every ventricle has choroid plexus. The lateral ventricles, third ventricle, and fourth ventricles all have choroid plexus. And then it will continue down into the spinal cord. And I'll just give you a reference here of a spinal cord, real quick, into the central canal. Cerebral spinal fluid. Epidermal cells would actually go down inside this. Since I have the spinal cord, let's go ahead and do a quick overview. When we look at a spinal cord, this is a cross section. Brain and spinal cord are both part of central nervous system, but the gray and white matter is basically kind of flip-flopped where the gray matter in the cerebrum is on the outer side, the white matter is on the inside. In the spinal cord, the gray matter is here on the inside, white matter on the outside. For reference, here you can see these swollen areas. This is part of what we consider our dorsal root ganglia right here. Here's your dorsal root dorsal roots. This is your ventral roots. So we can see that the dorsum that brings sensory input coming in, the gray matter goes all the way to the edge. This is the dorsum. The gray matter, it makes kind of an H, looks like a moth or a butterfly, but we consider it just like a, the shape of an H. These are called the horns. The gray horns, this would be the, because it's posterior, look for this, being posterior, this is the posterior or dorsal horn of the gray matter, the gray H. And this would be the ventral horn or anterior horn. Right here at the edge in the thoracic spine, this, the thoracic cord would be a lateral horn right about here. This correlates to your autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic chain ganglia. So we have dorsal root ganglia, dorsal root, ventral root. So sensory input comes in this way and motor output comes out this way. Where it collectively is together we call this your spinal nerve root, the spinal nerves. Now covering both brain and spinal cord we have what's called meninges. Let's get this little model here. So covering both the spinal cord, directly touching the spinal cord and directly covering the brain including going down these convolutions. These sulci are the grooves, the raised area being the gyrus. If you actually see that and you touch it, you'd be touching the pia mater, meaning delicate mother. So it would be going right over this area right here, the spinal cord covering. There's an outer thick area, I want to zoom in here so you can see it real cl closely. This outer part right here is called the dura mater. It's a very thick, tough mother. Now because this happens to be a sagittal cut, you have what's called a mid, uh, this mid-sagittal plane, mid-sagittal plane you have a superior sagittal sinus right here. What we don't see, there's a sickle shaped covering of dura matter that literally covers in between the two hemispheres. So in a sense, if I was to have the brain like this, 